All right, guys, this is Seismic Ammo. They have a 185 grain 9 millimeter load. Yeah, up until now, I mean, the biggest I ever heard of was a 158 subsonic, but right. you're pushing it a little further. Yes, we are. Okay, so, so why? What's the reasoning for that? Heavier hits harder. Okay. So this is a subsonic round designed for self defense. When you have the mass uh, that we have in these projectiles, you're able to hit. Uh, you've got a lot more uh, momentum, a lot more knockdown power than the conventional ammo. So we're doing 185 grain hollow point 9 mil. Got a 325 grain hollow point 45. Wow. Have a two and a half ounce 12 gauge shotgun slug. Okay. It's like going back to the old west, where it's just bigger and badder, pretty much. Is it? Is this lead, or using some like tungsten it is alloy lead. or something? It's lead. We've got okay. a couple different coatings on there. Okay. Uh, just a lot LD. of lead. Yes. Grab one here. Just a immense amount there. So and pressure-wise, is this something that you can run in any regular nine millimeter pistol? Is it plus P plus B plus? So we're actually NATO specking these. Okay. Uh, it would be equivalent to a plus P, maybe a little bit higher on the plus P plus side. We've run this through every single platform we can get our hands on. Uh, we've run it through high points, we've run it through select fire, had zero issue on any platform. Okay. Now, it took us about seven different redesigns of the Ojive to actually <laughs> get it to cycle and everything. I'm sure. But we're confident that we're finally there. It'd be fun to try this with a machine gun. Oh, oh yeah, it would. They chunk, do. Chunk, chunk, chunk. Can you show us the cartridge there and the length of the unfired bullet and all that, too? So show us the actual cartridge. You're so much, you were showing me how much powder room you actually have. Like, there's not a whole lot of powder capacity in there. No. But then again, nine parabellum, you don't need a whole lot of powder. No, you don't. But you're also talking about that's a steel case and an aluminum head. Right. This is a shell shot case or part cases. They've got a stainless steel uh, walls here. Mm -hmm. They're running a aluminum head. On it. Uh, they're basically infinitely reloadable. Mm -hmm. For once, a brass magnet exists. Same steel as magnetic, so you're able to pick them up afterwards. Uh, and that's what we're looking at here is the reason you want this stainless steel is because you're containing a lot of pressure in a very small Correct. outer area. Correct. Is that a fair right. point? And we're able to contain the uh, pressure levels. Because, I mean, zero. you don't have a lot of room there with that large. This is so. your 40 millimeter high, low pressure, 9 millimeter cartridge. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Really impressive. Uh, and yeah, you want to be able to see the difference in uh, recoil. With the most offensive ammo, you're going to have that sharp kick going on. One of the things we had to do with the powder was develop a very slow burning powder to keep the chamber pressures down. As a result, instead of having that uh, barrel clip, you would get a push over time. It allows you to get back on top of much quicker. All right, let's give it a try. Three, three. If you're going to have a uh, like more potentially more potent ammo, a USB is a good gun to put it in. Uh, that's true. All right, we'll go for that guy right there. So I don't know if this is going to be the result he's looking for or not, but I honestly couldn't tell a difference. <laughs> okay. But that's not necessarily a bad thing if you're expecting a 185 grain bullet to have a tremendous additional amount of recoil to it. It didn't. It shot, to me, imperceptibly differently from standard 115 grain. Well, I think that's what they're going for, right? The more mass, but that with the like same recoil impulse of a standard 9. Exactly. Huh. I'd like to try it. I did have pistol pads on that, so. Can I try it? Yeah, go for it. So we're at 185 grains. I say it feels a lot different. I think that's a really low recoil impulse considering you're shooting 185 grains. So in my opinion, that's shooting a little lighter than I think a standard 115 would. So I, I'm seeing it. I think it feels good. That's pretty cool. First of all, let's mention this is a Seismic, which is a subdivision of Haley Defense. These guys are really cool because they come out to all the DEF CON shoots. Yeah. They provide free ammo to DEF CON shoots. They're a real supporter of not only the shooting sports, shooting community, but the hacker community, too. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. It is, definitely. But in that regard, they took that kind of hacker mindset and tried to do something with the cartridge. To me, what's, all, what's more interesting is that there didn't appear to be any snake oil involved. No, not at all. This is a product that is not universally applicable, yeah. but it absolutely appears to have a place. Like, they, the physics makes sense. The iterative work that he talked about going through, I don't think this was entirely on camera, but like seven different versions of the O-Dive bullet to make sure that it would shape up properly to feed and everything. 
that's pretty cool and impressive. And just the technical work that they went through to make it physically function with, I mean, the problem is they have, have very little space in the case for powder, but plenty of space to fit the powder. The problem is when you have it in a very small area, your initial uh, chamber pressure gets very high. Yes. Um, and so that's why they have this dual material case so that the, the steel can withstand that initial pressure uh, when it first fires, mm -hmm. and then the aluminum is... Uh, it's a cool system. Like it is. It. Yeah. I do feel like legitimately the recoil was at least equal to or similar to a 115 grain, but you're putting out a 185 grain bullet. Yeah. It's really funny to me. We go from one booth to the next. The first booth we go to, which is Berno, with their 95 grain super bullet at, what, 2300 feet per second? 2050 talking about how that lower grain mass bullet but high velocity is what you need for bears. And then we go one booth over and Seismic is saying, no, 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 you want more mass on target. And I, I actually, I'm more willing to agree with them. Yeah, I, I would tend more towards more mass. I think physics uh, sort of apply there. They're not trying to make a magnum cartridge. No. Which is, I think, a really good idea. I think it's pretty cool. I think it has potential. What they're trying to do is give you a bigger bullet in a 9mm, not more recoil, for more terminal ballistics on the target. So much of the ammo that we see at, a, at SHOT Show every year is complete magical snake oil. <laughs> yes. This is a really cool exception in that it's not. This nope. appears to be very legitimate. So if you're interested in looking into putting out larger mass bullets out of your 9mm with a lot more recoil, Seismic seems to have a thing. Or 45. We didn't oh, yeah. shoot it, but they have a 325 grain 45 ACP. Yep, that's true. So, more mass means something. Yeah. Yeah, cool.